Green has been a concept which we have done for the last three years. Yeah. Uh, we do it every year. And it's been lucky for us. We started in 2013 with 13 ideas. It's been very lucky for us, and we hope it's going to be the same way this year. Yeah. So what we do is we come together as a team, mm -hmm. uh, and we try to decide which stocks will do well at that point of time, and we try to come together with an ideas. Then we shortlist ideas, and we come with 13 ideas. So if you look at the picks, even last year and this year, it's across the board. So yeah. in, in our current picks, for example, you'll see something in housing, which people are not very interested right now, to a building material, to a retail space, and in a consumer discretionary, which people are having doubts right now, but what we believe is, or you know, our team believes is that you know it's going to do well over a period of time. Mm -hmm. There are going to be phases right now which doesn't look to be great for these sectors, yeah. but these are stories to be in, and we do believe they, they do really well. And I'll just give you some idea how we have performed over the last uh, two years. So our first lucky 13 was in April 2013. Till date, if I just try to give a number perspective. We have benchmarked against CNX Midcap Nifty, which is of 100 stocks. Mm -hmm. So there we have given a return of something like 104% uh, as against 72% for CNX Midcap Nifty. Yeah. And for the last uh, Lucky 13, which came in April 2014, we have given some extraordinary returns. It's up by about 86% as against CNX Midcap Nifty up being 43%. Okay. So this year, again, we have picked up a few ideas. Uh, we can discuss them as you like. Yeah, let's go straight to the pick, you know, the, the best pick in there. I mean, the one that you have the... You have the most positive outlook, Ashina Housing, you're expecting a 76% upside in the next couple of years, I would believe. Yeah, so all our stock prices are based on March 70 uh, prices. So yeah. we have taken the view that it's going to be long term, and uh, that's the way we approached it. Uh, so Ashiana, you know, it's a mid-income housing kind of a company. Mm -hmm. The typical, their maximum ticket size is 7.5 uh, million, which is 75 lakh rupees. And their average ticket size varies between 2 point, uh, 25 lakh rupees to about 55 lakh rupees. And this is the place to win, we believe so. There's a lot of execution which is going to happen in this particular company over, the, over this particular year. Mm -hmm. So uh, FI16 end and somewhere in first quarter FI17, yeah. they're going to deliver nine projects in that time period. And revenue booking should come through. So we are very positive. My uh, analyst, uh, my friend, who was my colleague here, co who covers Ashiana, has a view that you know earnings will go, go up significantly because of this. And they want into new cities already. New launches will be there. Yeah. And this company has a model where what they do is typically they plan for the next five years. Okay. So when market sentiments are down, they'll get uh, you know uh, properties or other areas which will be cheaper in this mm -hmm. kind of situ situation. And they typically look at industrial towns or upcoming industrial towns. So the current base is primarily, you know, Rajasthan, Bhiwadi area, and then NCR. They're mm -hmm. going to get in Chennai, Calcutta very soon. Okay. And that's going to be a huge trigger for this stock. Okay, let's come to your, uh, another recommendation that you have, and that's Sumani Ceramics, where you see over a 50% upside. I thought generally the home building companies didn't do so well in the prior quarter, at least when we go by their earnings. So, yeah, you're right on that sense. There is a slowdown in the market for sure. But if you look at Sumani, it grew at 19% even in the last quarter. So this guy has some kind of benefits because he, his uh, portfolio is going to upgrade over a period of time. So mm -hmm. he's not big in vitrified tiles. He's growing up that market significantly, and that should lead to significant numbers in his side. Also, one thing is very interesting, which you've got to note, in home uh, building material space, tiles exports are picking up a big way. Yeah. One, because of currency, and two, there are some concerns which has happened from China, so which is helping Indian markets. A lot of European nations and Latin nations are looking at India as a market to procure from rather than China. Mm. That's helping this company also, the whole sector as such. So Somani is, you know, we believe will do well over a period of time. They are going to be tough quarters. This quarter looks to be tough for across the board. Typically Q2, uh, you know, there are rains and there are stuff like that, but it's going to be tough this quarter for sure. But he'll still do better than industry. So industry is expected to grow at 9, 10% even with this kind of tough environment. All right, let's talk about another stock then. Uh, Bata, you're expecting that one to do well uh, going ahead? You're expecting the SSG to, to do well up, as yeah. well? Yeah. So Bata, again, uh, you know, last two, three quarters have been typically very bad because they had some SAP issues. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, my colleague who covers it has a view that uh, SSG will pick up significantly over the next uh, few quarters. Yeah. And that should help to uh, expand margins. Also, Bata has a total store count of 1,400 stores already. And they plan to add 100 okay. stores every year. That's going to be incredibly good for those guys. The organized market is not very big right now in the Indian footwear market. And Bada is a leader in the organized part, you know, more than 20% plus share. So this guy can grow at, you know, 16, 17% CAGR on top line and 20% plus on bottom line over the next two, three years. And if economy turns up to do really well, I think this guy will be better off. So that's why you're pretty positive on Bata also.
Another recommendation is Orient Cement. Now, this is a stock which has given a 300% return yeah. in the last one year, but it's not done too much since the beginning of uh, this year. What so could be the I think that should be the case for most cement companies because there is a view that things have slowed down. So, but the view which we are having is that this guy is going to complete his new capacity by end of FI16, okay. and that's going to really trigger in volumes. Yeah. Second thing, he's in very interesting market. This new capacity is going to come in Karnataka. Yeah. This, uh, you know, three million uh, ton capacity, and AP and Telangana are going to do well because of whatever political issues they had in the past. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be beneficiary there. So his major markets are west and south right now. So south will go up, which is in a good place to be in. Prices are still better off. And this time, interestingly, the industry has maintained the prices even despite whatever we hear on the infrastructure side. Correct. So he should do well. So again, your 30% plus uh, growth in earnings is expected to come through. Volumes are going to be good. And uh, we have, uh, this, he's a very cost efficient producer. He, actually, his major majority of his plants are close to the market, and his raw material sourcing is close to his plant also. So he's going to do well over a period of time. That's our view. All right, Arun. Thanks so much for coming down to the studio. Let's get all his picks up uh, on the screen as well. Interesting picks. There's everything in there from cement uh, to ceramics to you have pharma and all those stocks. In fact, they are part of his uh, list. But uh, time to slip into a short break. When you come back, uh, we'll speak uh, with SP Nair, the CMD of IFCL, as well as Suman Sinha of Renew Power Ventures. Stay tuned. CNBC TV 18, celebrating 15 years of